Hello and welcome to the Imbue Podcast. My name is Alex and today I'm joined by my good friend Daniel Roberts. Daniel is the fastest 110 meter hurdler in the world. He won NCAAs and USA Nationals. He's represented by Nike and travels the world competing um, for track and field. Join us today as we chat about everything from his early days of track and field to signing and going to University of Kentucky and leaving University of Kentucky a year early to run professionally. We talk about his goals for Tokyo 2021 and how the coronavirus and everything is impacting it. We also talk about his favorite Disney movies. So stay tuned. Bro, it's like 11. Wait, is, isn't it 11 for you? Yeah, my brother's <laughs> sister ain't like got nothing to do with it. He's asleep. What? I said, my brothers and sisters ain't got nothing to do. They just in there knocked out. Oh, for real? <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, man. Cool. We are live. So, dude, the question that everybody is w- is wondering, who is your favorite character on Tiger King? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it? <laughs> hey, you- well, nobody is wondering that, bro. <laughs> But no, I haven't watched it yet. I've actually heard, like, I've heard a bunch of people that said they watched it. I've heard mixed reviews. Somebody said I would like it. Somebody said I wouldn't. So I'm like, I don't even know if I should watch it. <laughs> Who's your favorite character? Have you watched it? I only I watched the first episode. So, <laughs> but. Is it good? Would you recommend it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've only seen the first episode. So there's like a lot of drama in it. And like. Yeah, I mean, I, I like honestly, I like Joe Exotic. Like, I've okay, in the first episode, okay, a lot of there, there's people who say in like the later episodes that he's not as cool or whatnot, or he's like a little bit more sketchy. But I don't know. He's like he's like so authentically himself, and he had, and he had a super tough life too. Like, he was he was gay when he was, or he knew he was gay when he was like 13, and his dad like didn't approve of it. So he uh, his dad made him like shake his hand in, in front of him, and then he ended up. Was like so depressed in such a bad place. He drove his car off a bridge and broke his back, and had to go to like Florida for rehab. And then that's kind of where he got into like all the exotic animals and whatnot. So wait, so is this like a, is this like an actual thing? Like this stuff actually happened, or it's like a story? No, it's like, like a, it's like a made up. No, it's like this is act. This isn't no. This isn't like Grey's Anatomy. This is like some. This is some real stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's okay. Uh, I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah. That's cool though. Yeah, I know. Kind of crazy. I, I might check it out. What? You might check it out. I might check it out one of these days. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, we're here with Daniel Roberts. Daniel is the most humble guy you ever met, but probably the most accomplished. I mean, NCAA champion, uh, USA champion, and yeah, I mean, just an all around great guy. So today, I just want to chat about your like your journey because so I met you at the University of Kentucky, right? But you had a whole athletic journey before yeah. then. And then you've had a whole athletic journey after that in the past couple of years. We've just rocketed into the forefront of the national, uh, you know, national track and field scene. So I was thinking maybe to start way back when, like, when did you first start running? Like, what was your first memory of that? So, uh, as far as, like, running, like, track, my first year doing that was seventh grade. So before that, I was pretty much straight football. Like, Oh, I for real? Football, but- Football was my life, but like I was gonna go to the NFL, play, do my thing, make some money, you know. <laughs> yeah. that, was like my, that was like my dream, like since like third grade, I was playing football, and I loved it. I was kind of small, but you know, still, I was still out there just running, being fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so yeah, seventh grade, I started actually doing track. I was actually playing football, basketball, and track. So it was seventh, eighth grade, and ninth grade. I did all three sports. So, Probably varsity on all three. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. I was trying. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Track has been ever since, probably since uh, I'd say by about ninth grade when I really got like serious about track. Like, and I knew that this is what I wanted to do. Seriously, I, mean, I still did football, and basketball that year. Yeah, but I feel like that was the year that I really got like, kind of serious about it and mm-hmm. focused in more on track. Did you do a lot of stuff like outside of it? Like, uh, did you go, ever do like AAU or like USATF? Because I know they have a bunch of stuff. Like, is that, is that what you mean by getting? What, what you mean by getting serious, or just like the mental state? You were like, this is like what I was born to do. Like, and I'm gonna go do it. 
I'm thinking more like just the mental state, just like knowing like this is what I want to do and putting more effort into that, you know? Yeah. But um, nah, I really only did, what, I think I did like maybe two years of summer track, like AAU yeah. and stuff. But I don't really know anything about it until like, I want to say like, probably after ninth grade, like ninth grade going into 10th grade. That was like my first year doing Actually, it might have been 10th grade going to my junior year. Because, yeah, I never really did my summer track. It was just school track. Because I was doing football in the summer, really. So I'll go from football in the summer, yeah, basketball in the winter, and then track in the spring. So I was just going back to back to back. Dang. But, I mean, it was cool. I enjoyed it. I like all those sports. So, yeah. Wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. That's pretty crazy, though. So, like, so once you started to get serious, when did you start getting interest from like school? So you know you wanted to take it to the next level. When did you start getting like recruited for, or actually what events were you running? Were you, were you running the 100 meter hurdles at that point already or no? 110 meter hurdles? I mean, yeah, I've been, do, I've been doing the 110 hurdles since seventh grade, but my main event was actually, um, I don't want to say my main event, it was my favorite event. It was triple jump, bro. For real? I love that event so much. And I miss it, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Triple jump is so fun. Bro. It's actually one of the best events ever created. It Seriously? just feels like you're fine, bro. But anyway, yeah. Dude, that's Flo, yeah, that's Flo's so event. That's is, was that Coach Flo's event? Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I love Triple Jump, man. But um, yeah, one ten hurdles main thing. I was doing five events like high school. I would come in the morning. Cause you know they have the field events early at like eight a.m. Mm-hmm. So I'll be doing triple jump and then I go to the four hour one, which is the first one in the event. And then I have the hurdles after that, and then I have like the three hundred hurdles or the two hundred later, and then the four hour four at the end. So I'd be Damn, them high school track <laughs> days. It was so working you, man. It was working you. That's like every week, but yeah, <laughs> nah, it, it helped. It got me strong. It helped out. So. Dang. Yeah, man. That's crazy. Um, so then, yeah, so, you, I mean, obviously you got really freaking good in high school. And then when did you start getting recruited? Um, and, like, what was that whole process like, like, to get recruited? And then... Uh, and where all were you looking? I want to say, uh, well, junior year was the first year that I really... Like, I really, like, I ran, like, really fast. Same. Sophomore year was, I think I ran one fast time sophomore year. It was, like, a, it was my summer sophomore year. It was, like, a 13-8. I ran that Damn, for the 110? Year. You said what? For the 110? 13-8? Yeah, 110. Dude, that's ran, fast for a sophomore. <laughs> that's, that's moving. Yes, it was, it was fast, but I ran that sophomore year, and then junior year is when I ran. I was rolling, man. I ran like thirteen six a couple of times. I think I ran thirteen six at state actually. Yeah. I ran thirteen four. Did you win at, at state? A, at a meet, huh? Did you win state your junior year when you ran thirteen six? Yeah. The junior year, I won. I won taking a one ten hurdles or three hundred hurdles in triple jump. So I had got three gold medals that year. My Damn. first state championship, I didn't win until junior year, and I went three. <laughs> what? Dude, like, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> that's actually crazy. That is. I mean, I guess it's just a, it's just to make up for the first two years, and I get none. I had to get three that year. <laughs> <laughs> had to ball out. <laughs> but, but, no, yeah, junior year, probably I started getting recruited a little bit, and then, like, the fall of uh, senior year is when I started taking my visits. And I, I went to Kentucky, obviously, TCU, and South Carolina. Why'd you, what, what attracted you to Kentucky? Was it Coach Flo with uh, uh, Kenny or what was, what was it that? Um, the biggest was probably Coach Johnson, Alan Johnson. He was the, oh, the hurdle real? coach at the time. Yeah. And he was a, he was a professional hurdler that I used to like watch. So that big, cause he was really, he was, a U, he was running for the U.S. He was great. One of the best hurdles we've ever had. And then uh, on top of that, Kenny and all them, that helped. Yeah. Also having Nick there. You remember Nick? Yeah, I remember Nick. How's he doing? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't heard from him in a while. Is I he down in Florida? There. I haven't heard from him in a minute either, though, honestly. But I'm pretty sure he's doing all right. He's back down in Florida okay. from what I know. Yeah. So. 
Well, Nick, if you, yeah, if you, it was, it was more, it was more the team than it was the coaches. Really. I just liked the environment. I liked the people that was the guys that we were around. Yeah, so it was a good crew. Was, it was a good crew. For sure. Yeah, we, we had a good group of guys for sure. So that was cool. That's I think that's the most the thing that drew me to Kentucky more than anything else. And how did you like the other schools? How did you like TCU and South Car- or TCU in South Carolina? Because I know, t- bro, I loved, I loved them, bro. I don't even lie. I loved every single visit I went on. Seriously, <laughs> but like, just Kentucky just gave it was like I don't know. It was a different feel. It felt like I was comfortable around everybody. Like it was cool. I feel like we was already friends. Like it didn't feel like I was still trying to get to know these people. You know, I feel like we came in and then we was cool. Like the first day. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was great, man. I'm glad I made this decision too. It's been a good, good three, three years. Yeah. Well, yeah, for sure. Um, but I, one thing I don't think most people um, know is like when you were coming into university, you actually had, a, I think you had a torn ACL, didn't you? You just torn your ACL and you were recovering yeah, from tore, that. Uh, yeah, I tore a lot of things. Oh, you did? <laughs> my ACL, yeah. Oh, it was? I didn't even know that. Okay. What, what happened? I had, I, and I, I don't even think, I, had, I don't think I know the story around that. Like what happened around all that? All right. So senior year of high school, I, I mean, I'm still playing football. So oh, I don't know if you're saying football. It happened. Okay. Yeah, it happened in the fall. Um, it happened like November, December area. And I had it happened. Oh, dang, I want to say. I want to say it happened in November, and then I had two surgeries, one in like October, and then one. Wait, no. It happened in like late October, and I had a surgery in November, I think, and then a surgery in December, because I tore like. Everything in my knee, bro. I pretty much had to get a new knee. Like, Seriously, I, I tore like my I tore my ACL, my LCL, your PCL. My, your... <laughs> I tore like meniscus, a hamstring muscle, like all of that. Like, did your leg just like go thing. backwards, or what happened? It it was, I don't even know, bro. Like, <laughs> it was so weird. Honestly, it just happened, and I remember being on the ground looking up. In some pain, leg felt like it was on fire, and then I just started crying. So. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't even imagine because, like, at this point, you signed. I, I presumably you signed already Kentucky, and then you're like, "Oh my gosh!" Nah, I, you, I didn't even sign yet at that time. You didn't? Oh wow! I didn't sign. Uh, at when did at you that sign? time, I wasn't even signed, so oh my I was gosh. extra like. In my mind, I was freaking out, bro. I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> dude. I was so scared, bro. But I mean, honestly, like I was scared probably for like a day, and then after that, I was like, you know what, it's cool. This happens to people all the time. But it really most people it was in my mind. I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> dude, most people would not be thinking that. Most people would be like, oh my god, like what the like for you to have that much faith. I feel like is so like unique. I feel like to be like. This is like what this is the plan, like whatever it's gonna work out is yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that first night, bro, was it was rough. I was I was definitely scared, nervous, but after that I got over it. Had to had to trust God, you know. And I like that was playing, I was broke yet for me. So I know if if he has it for me, then that's definitely gonna be the best way. So yeah, I was cool after that, man. It, it wasn't easy, though. I mean, obviously, you saw me fresh beer with my skin leg, bro. Yeah, trying dude. To, trying to do the murders. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, like, well, I, like, I don't even understand how you were able to get through that. Like, you had a year and a half, basically, of not running. Bro. And then trying to get back in it. And then I think within bro. that first year you were back, you made it to NCAAs, like, in your first year back. Or in, did you make it to indoors? You made I, no, I didn't, make, I didn't make it to nationals, but I, I mean, I had a pretty good season. Indoors, remember, indoors, I broke my arm. <laughs> do you remember wait I don't remember no what happened indoor after our first two home meet because we went to Indiana and then we had our two home meet and yeah. after that meet we were supposed to go to Nebraska but I broke my arm like the Wednesday before we were supposed to leave oh shit I do remember so I that missed, now I missed the whole rest of the indoor season after that damn and I was I was very good I was driving to like every week and then yeah I broke my arm and then, yeah, I was out for the rest of the North season, came back, spring break in Arizona, ran over there. I didn't make the spring break trip. 
<laughs> Dude, I was so bad my freshman year. I was bad, man. But there's lots of reasons I went into that. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> but you were so but you were so good, man. Like like for you to come back from your injury like that's just to me that's so mind boggling. For you to come back from your injury and have that just yeah. such an intense focus and then almost make it to nationals, like that is yeah. like really that like just overcoming all that adversity to be able to be right back in it. I think that's that's something super special. But, yeah, it was it was definitely something, bro, for sure. Cause yeah. like like you said, a lot of people don't know like what led up to that freshman year. Like they just see like to me, like I it's not like something I like to think about because like it wasn't a good year at all. Like I wanted to make nationals and do all that stuff. You know that every freshman wants to come in doing being great, being the best, but I didn't get to do that. Like I was. Half the year, I was just trying to get my strength back in my leg, just trying to like get back to being normal before I could even get better, you know. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it was it was a struggle, but it was good. It was I I actually enjoyed my first year, bro. Like like I said, the people we had, everybody knew you, Charles, Will, Tim, Craig, yeah. like everybody. <laughs> Craig. Bro. Like, we had such a fun group. We all did down there, <laughs> down there in the basement, bro. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was definitely fun, bro. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I know, man. It, it was, was really, it was actually really good memories. Yeah. yeah <laughs> All the Disney cool. movies we watched, man. I swear. I know. We would kill them Disney movies. <laughs> you, I'm guessing you have to have Disney Plus now, don't you? You got Disney Plus? Of course. Bro. I was just watching it last night. Yes, I love Disney, bro. You know I love my Disney movies. Which, which, what you watching now? I remember we watched, we watched Aladdin. We watched, like, what's the, I don't know. What, what's, what's your favorite one? What? You already know Aladdin is my favorite all time Disney movie. I mean, other than like Lion King, obviously, because Lion King is the like the OG. Everybody knows Lion King is that's a great one, but uh, Aladdin definitely will be right there with it for me. I love Aladdin. That's my movie, bro. Yeah, because <laughs> oh uh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Have they come out with any new ones recently? Any new Disney movies on Disney Plus or no? You, like, said, you said what? Do they have any new movies on Disney Plus or no? Um, they have like all their. You remember Disney Channel? Like they have all their like Disney Channel movies, like High School Musical, all that stuff, and all those like Wendy Wu, the Homecoming Warrior. <laughs> Wendy Wu. That. They have like all those, all those movies that came on Disney Channel, and then what else? They have all the Star Wars movies because Disney and them have their little partnership joint, and then they have like a lot of Pixar movies because they have a partnership. And also they have the Marvel movies too. So there's not just like Disney, Disney movie, but Disney has like all the bankers. I could just have Disney Plus and I'd be just fine. Damn. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I remember that. That was that was good times. But um so then let's go into I'm curious about your time at Kentucky. What was that like? Like cause I, I left after one year. What was your time like after I left? Like how did those next couple of years with because I think your sophomore year because you, you end up leaving after your junior year, right? So you so your sophomore yeah. year, you made it was well, kinda like your like your first big breakout year. And then like I feel like each year has been like a breakout year for you, just like on a different level. Like sophomore year was a big, yeah, was a breakout. You made the NCAAs. Then your uh, junior year, you're like, okay, I'm winning everything. Like it was basically you and Grant, right? You guys are number one, yeah, and, number yeah, one and two in the too. world, uh, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. And you guys were in yeah. college at the time, number one and two in the world and at college, so just a bunch of young bucks like fighting for it. <laughs> and then then you guys both go pro. So like, I'm curious about how that, what that journey was like, like going through and having such a great rival to to compete against in your in your journey. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, sophomore year, sophomore year is to me is a lot. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, highs compared to freshman year, but overall, I still don't like. I don't like to think about sophomore year either. <laughs> Why? It's just because like soft, like every year I've had so many like, like freshman year when I broke my arm, I was out for like the whole indoor season. And then sophomore year, like something was going on with my knees, and then I had surgery on, and I missed like a whole month and some change of the outdoor season. And then I came back FCCs. I ran a PR, which is really fast, thirteen twenty seven. I get silver at FCC sophomore year, mm -hmm. and then 
like I ran that, but then after that, like I wasn't running any faster. I wasn't running that time again. Like my knee was still bothering me some mm-hmm. for the rest of the season. Then I go to nationals and I fall in the prelims. I don't um, know if you knew that. Uh, I don't remember if I saw that. I don't know. I don't remember. But yeah, at national, so when you I fall in the prelims, bro. That's outdoor. And then the indoor, I didn't make it. I didn't make it to. I made it to national, but I didn't make it to the final. I was like nine. I was the last person out. Damn. So it was. Probably it was better because I made it to nationals, both indoor and outdoor. But it was still kind of still hurt. But dude, but that I I, I would imagine that adversity made you so much stronger. Like, even though it, even though at the time like it may have seemed like that you lost, or maybe it wasn't like you don't want to think back on it. But like you're so much stronger now. Maybe look at the look at the guys who you're competing against. Maybe some of them are professionals, but not at the level that you're competing at, right? So like I think oh yeah, yeah for sure. Like it's weird. Like it's it's like an S curve almost. Like you have to go through this like super tough period in order to co- come back up and be on like to be super great, I feel like almost like, like, and I feel like yours is just a constant, like yeah. ebb and flow of that. Yeah, it just, it, exactly. It just got it. But yeah, I mean, after sophomore year, bro, junior year, I was just came into the mindset. Like, honestly, like I was planning to go pro after junior year. Yeah. Since the first year I came to Kentucky. Bro. Seriously. <laughs> wow. But I mean, I didn't know how it was going to happen after the first two years going the way they did. <laughs> Seriously. And then you're like, and then, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> and then, and then I wasn't, I wasn't even like worried about that anymore. I was just running, like trying to PR every race. And I literally did, I PR at every hurdles race indoors last year. Wow. So every time I ran hurdles, the 60 hurdles, I PR. What was your, and what was your PR indoor? That was my, 741. Damn. That is so hits, fast. Dude. Which would be the collegiate record if Grant didn't beat me. <laughs> Damn, Grant. What do you want? He went like 739 or something? It was like super close, wasn't he, it? He went 735. Like, oh, damn. Right, bro. Yeah. But, I mean, like, we have the number one and two time indoor and outdoor in the collegiate history. So, like, I can't be mad at that. Like, <laughs> that is bad. Like, we're the fastest two people to ever go through college and win the hurdles. That's crazy. Which is. Which is insane to think about, but and at the same time too, like yeah, exactly. We were there the same year. <laughs> That's crazy. It's wild, man. Huh. But yeah, junior year. I mean, it was like you know how I went, but it was it was oh, it, 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 how it looked. That's <laughs> I say that it was it was just crazy. It was amazing. It was I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Everything just came together. It was like a symphony. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Yeah. How's how's Grant doing now, by the way? I've I haven't seen I haven't been following track as closely as I should have been. I suppose the indoor season was cut short with the coronavirus yeah. stuff, but no, he's he's doing good as always, man. He's down in Florida training. So yeah, he's doing good. Him and Coach Holly down there again as always. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, with this season going the way it is, I mean, I don't know what like if we're even gonna run these this season. Like, it just depends on how all this stuff goes. Are you still so, training and stuff? I'm sure you are. Or is it, is Yeah, we're doing – yeah, it's just – for us right now, it's not as, like, heavy, like, as, like, our actual training would be, mm-hmm. you know? It's because we don't know when we're going to actually get to win, so. Oh, shit, you just got out there. Yeah, we just want a little light stuff right now. But, nice. Yeah. Um. So what, what was it like getting uh, your offer to, uh, from Nike? Like, what was that whole experience with, like, going pro? Like, I'm curious. Like, from – Yeah. I, I, I'm actually really curious. Like, what was that like from, like, when you were when you were at the top? Like, basically, you went – like, when, when did the process start? Like, did you have someone reach out to you and, like, hey, we want to represent you? Or, like, how did that whole thing work? Well, well, first, it was, like, agents reaching out. It wasn't just, like, companies. It was, like, um, the agents would reach out in a – not to me personally. They would reach out to like Coach Hall. Okay. Or yeah, usually Coach Hall or my parents or something like that. Yeah. But they reach out to them and try to get in contact with them. And then we had to, we set up like some meetings and things to where like I could like talk to them. It's kinda like the when you get into college it's pretty much like 
they're telling you what they can offer and then like you're at you're like you're trying to get a feel for them also to see if you like the people and all that stuff and then yeah pretty much just a lot of talking with the parents a lot of playing trying to figure out who to go with who we like best and then i literally bro like the night before the NCAA final like i was struggling so hard to choose somebody to go with because yeah. i had to sign the day after i mean i didn't have to sign the day after but you would be to. best to sign then so that you can just hurry up and get going with the the negotiating process for like your actual contract and yeah your brands and all that stuff so i was i was up all night but like i was struggling so hard because there was these two that i really liked bro and i just didn't know which one to pick which one <laughs> like i had not can you say which ones you had offers from or do you have from all basically I, what you said? Can you can you say which ones you had offers from, or, or did you have them from all basically, all the basic, all the? I mean, it, it was it's not really it's not like college where it's like offers. It's just like people who would want to represent you. Who? Oh, is, oh, you're talking about the agent. Okay, okay. I thought you were talking, yeah, about, the talking about the brand. I'm talking about the agency. Okay, yeah. I'm talking about with the agents, bro. So the, literally the day before the NCAA final, like I'm up all night trying to not all night, but I'm up late trying to think and figure out who I'm going to sign with the next day after the final. Yeah. So I, I'm like, I don't even have time to be nervous. Like, I wasn't even nervous that night because I, was, I wasn't even thinking about the fans. <laughs> I was just thinking about, like, that situation and trying to get all that going. And there was there was so much pressure on that race, bro. Honestly, I can tell you I've never felt anything like it. Seriously. <laughs> because Dude, actually, I can't, can, you take it, can you take me through that? Like, what was it like? I'm curious because, like, I, I know like normal race anxiety, but this is like you're competing. You like I like you have so many things at once. Like you get your agent, you got your uh, like the NCAA double or NCAA championship on the line with one of the best, like two of the best collegiate hurdlers in history. Exactly. Like and then yeah, Bro, what was it like? The nerve. I, I'm curious. Man, like, it was. I never, I never felt like that at the starting line for a race ever. Seriously? I never felt like that. <laughs> walking to the starting line and i never felt like that at a track meet even just warming up bro like there was a point when i first started my warm-up like my eyes was blurry and i was like where the hurt is that <laughs> <laughs> i was like it was such a it was such a weird experience bro i had to, I had to get, get myself together refocus but it was actually the craziest because like because it wasn't just like like people say it's just another race, but that wasn't just another race race, bro. Like it really wasn't like Yeah. <laughs> it was the, the way me and Grant's rivalry was going, like it it had so much anticipation for the national championship, bro. Like we at regionals we both ran really fast. At SECs, I won the thirteen oh seven, which is crazy fast. And then so it just led up to that moment and i feel like everybody was expecting something crazy like and you could tell like, you, you could feel it mm -hmm. and on top of that obviously our ages and everything and like we don't want to go out here and run a trash race and then they're like dang you can't get that much money because you know you can't do what you thought you can do at nationals or something like that like mm -hmm. nationals is the biggest stage for you to get seen for like shoe companies and everything because they're there they'd be watching so if you don't do your thing at nationals, it's like all oh, your season was pretty much for nothing. Not for nothing, obviously you can still get a contract, but it won't be as big if you do it at the big state. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So all of that, bro. And then when I and then when I like the way we walked in, we walked in like from the finish line, and we had to walk like all the way down past the hurdles to the start line. Oh my gosh! And just I saw like. The stadium was full, bro. Like packed, packed, packed. And this is in this is in Oregon, right? <laughs> like this is like a this is like a football stadium, basically. Like it's there's a so many there's like th no, 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 tens no, of thousands of people not, there. Not this year. It was it was in Texas this year. Oh, it was oh shit. Okay. Yeah, but it was so packed. It was hot, which I like, but it was easy to warm up, you know. Yeah. Go through it, everything. But it was in Texas, and the stadium was packed, bro. Like. I didn't think it was gonna be that packed because, like, I was there the day before for the girls and then the the other day for our prelims. And I mean, it, it was full, but it wasn't like that. But that day, 
felt like everybody and their mama wanted to see <laughs> <laughs> this meat. <laughs> and then we get to the starting line, bro, and they start calling the name. And then you just see everybody on the home stretch stand up, bro. Like, literally the whole side, like, and you can see it, but it's not like we can't see it because we're sitting right there. Right? <laughs> yeah. And they they all stand up, and I was like, oh, my gosh. In my mind, like, I was like, this is a, a historical moment, bro. And it was it was the craziest thing ever. And then, yeah, it then went off. We ran, did our thing. It was great. Damn. That's history. But it was a wild experience. I was definitely say that. Dude, that is so a crazy. That is bro. so crazy. <laughs> Damn. That's wild, bro. Man. <sighs> that's, that's crazy to think back yeah, on. Yeah. But who, so who did you end up going with after that, after that, uh, after that race? Like, well, I, um, my agency, I'm with Stellar Athletics, but I sign with uh, Nike. So, Nike. The boy is a Nike athlete now. Damn. Out here. Dude, that. With the swoosh. Yeah, that jacket is pretty sick. Got Phil Knight's, uh, Phil's name on there. All the different Nike logos. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's fresh. Yeah, that's so fresh. <laughs> do you, you get, you get that? Like do you like the, do you get the monthly care packages? Like, with just like a, Insane amount of clothes. Yes, sir. I probably got one at home right now waiting for me when I get back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be honest. Seriously? Dang. Crazy. Yeah, man. It's been, it's been great, though. The pro-life, bro. It's everything you could ever imagine. You get to travel the world, like, see beautiful places, bro. Mm-hmm. And, like, meet people it's like it's everything you like about track in one you know like, yeah the best thing, for me anyways like, i love track because like the people you meet and like you get to go all these different places and it's literally all that but like times a thousand because you're traveling the world now not just like a state or like the country mm-hmm. you're traveling the world and you meet all these people see all these beautiful places bro i went to switzerland for my first race Dude. and that was the most that was, was the most it? beautiful place I've ever been to in my life. For like, real? actually. Seriously? Damn. That, that's by far my favorite place. I would definitely go again. Yeah. For, like, just to chill. Like, not even for me, just to chill. Was that Lausanne? For my, yeah, yeah, that's oh. where I went. Okay. Lausanne. And then, but my favorite meet that I went to was definitely Paris. Seriously? What, 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 what happened the there? Stadium was, the stadium was huge, bro. Like, it was monstrous. It was, I don't know, it felt like a... NFL game where like it's track. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like it was so big. And then like I mean I I won that meet too, so that might maybe that's why I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I the stadium was great. Grant was there, so it was fun. So I had people I knew there. You and know? you beat Grant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was cool, man. It, I enjoyed it for sure. It was great. Was that was that after uh, Worlds or was that before Worlds? Cause no, that was before. Uh, Wars was my last race. Yeah, and yeah. what happened there? Because I know you like you got disqualified or or like it, it, you went over yeah. a hurdle legally or something like that. Like what? What happened with? What happened with all around that? I um, where was it? It was like the seventh or eighth hurdle. Yeah, I went over it and then I I hit I hit the hurdle and also hit the person beside me. My hurdle actually broke. If you look at my Twitter, bro, with the picture, yeah. my timeline picture is a picture of the broken hurdle. It gets completely in half. But what? yeah, I, I hit the hurdle, and I accidentally hit the person beside me hurdle, too. So I got disqualified. So I won my heat, but didn't count for that. So. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, you bro- wait, so what, what, what got you disqualified? Was it breaking your hurdle, or was it just hitting the person next to you? No, no, no. no. It, was, it was just hitting one beside me. It wasn't breaking my hurdle. I mean, you can break hurdles all day if you want to. But, that's that's hard. How how but, how the, how'd you break a hurdle, man? That's actually pretty crazy. Bro, I don't even know. Well, I was on something else last year. I was moving so fast. <laughs> I was strong, everything, and it just snapped. I didn't even feel like I hit it that hard. Like I, I could tell I hit the hurdle. Yeah. But it didn't feel like I hit it that hard. That thing is literally snapped in half. <laughs> like, Damn. It's crazy. But yeah, that would happen. I mean, it was it was definitely really tough at that time, and probably for. 
a few days after that. Yeah. Because like I was, I was expecting to win the whole thing, bro. Like for real. And you, was, you probably would have, like, hundred percent. Like I was, I was expecting to come home with a gold medal. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, things happen. It wasn't. I wasn't prepared for the moment, I guess. And there's. <laughs> or it just wasn't my time, you know. Either one, but. You know, there there'll be more opportunities, so. Tokyo 2021, man. Tokyo 2021. <laughs> yes, sir. Dude, that's crazy. That, that's crazy that they moved it, though. Yeah, that is wild. I mean, I figured because, like, how crazy things are going right now, but, like, that's never, ever happened before. Like, I know. <laughs> I know, dude. How, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about, like, it? I mean, at this point, like, it, it is what it is, you know? Like, I'm, I'm enjoying this time I get to chill with my family because I don't ever get to hang out with my family, like. The last time, I don't think I've ever been home this long since I came to college. Wow. And usually after, like, sophomore year, I've only been home. Like, 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 be like a week, maybe a week and a half at the most. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's cool to be home for a little bit, hanging out with people and just enjoying that time, man. Enjoying the fam while I, while I can still do that, you know. You never know with how this stuff going on yeah. what can happen so you gotta enjoy those relationships you got but i'm definitely doing that man I'm looking forward to the rest of the season if it comes and then if not then definitely next season with tokyo just the next three four years bro really because we got world championships after that yeah and you know, like all of that stuff so yeah i'm excited bro yeah dude it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting couple of years i'm i'm excited to watch dude for real for sure, bro. For sure. But one of, one of the things I like actually really respect about you, and I, even when I was at Kentucky, is like, no matter what go, is going on around, like in the world or what's happening to you, like you always have such a calm mental state. Like, and this is like, well, I guess we were, we were talking about earlier. Like when you're talking yeah. about world championships, you're like, maybe it's just not my time. Like, like I, like, I don't know if you realize this, but that's, like, such a rare trait for people to, like, be able to take a step. No, I'm actually being serious, dude. I think that's probably a big reason why you're so successful because, maybe, like, that's maybe, that is how things are supposed to happen. I think some people try and fight it, right? They try and, yeah, this isn't how it's yeah. supposed to go or, and that's when they get into bad issues. And I'm actually, I'm a victim of that too, right? Like, I've done, I've definitely done that in the past. And so I think that's yeah. super cool for you to, like, I don't know. And I, I think that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think that, that that plays a huge part in into why you're so successful is because you trust in you trust in, in the plan, right? Or how it's supposed to go. Yeah. Not, yeah, not it's not so it's not I mean, you. I can definitely see that. Yeah. So, yeah. That's just I my mean, vision. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not to like take credit for it's just how I'm wired or it's just <laughs> and believe my life. So it's like nothing I can it's just me. So I don't know. Yeah. It's better. Who I am, but I could see it could definitely because I mean it's easy to get caught up in what's going on instead of seeing like the bigger picture. So I, I always try to look at it like that. Mm-hmm. Respect. But yeah, man, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that for sure. So overall, um, what how you how you liking the the pro life? It's it's for you. I know you said you like it's everything you wanted and more, but like, could you like what some in some more detail? Like what like what about it is. Well, like, what are some right. of your favorite trips you've been on? What's some of the like some of the cool people you gotta you can hang out with? Like, what's what's the life of D Rob like? <laughs> <laughs> what well, I mean, one you get paid, so yeah. that's always that's always nice. Yeah. Um. That I mean, traveling. I love traveling already, so that I love that are probably the most out of anything traveling to all these different countries and everything, meeting people, hanging out like. When you go to the meets, like they keep us all in the same hotel, so you like, oh, for real? you get to hang out with the people like from different countries, the old country, like the old heads, like Justin Gatlin, all them. The old, the old heads. heads. You just call them old. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he up there. He up there. I do. Hey. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think he'd say if you heard, if you heard you call him old? <laughs> I don't think he'd be mad. I mean, I'm I'm a baby. Like I'm fresh in this thing. He's like. What fourteen years in? Yeah, no, he's, he's deep in. In. like he he got me with the wisdom. I need to get some of that. But no, nah, it's just like the people, everything. Like I trained with Christian Coleman, so like, oh, for real? like 
Who can be mad about that, bro? The fastest man in the world. Yeah. My training partner. Damn. So, I didn't know that. That's awesome. You're the, you're the fastest hurdler in the world, so it goes hand in hand. Well, I think we may have lost him temporarily. Come back, D Rob. Hmm. He's back. <laughs> I'm so sorry, bro. I don't know what happened. No it worries, was, man. No worries at all. I think it, my phone overheated, to be honest. With for real? <laughs> Dang. Sorry, bro. I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what just happened, bro. <laughs> That's okay. I forgive you. No, I'm just kidding. It happens. I can, just, I can, I can edit all that stuff. I can edit all that out, so. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. But where where are we at? I forgot. Are you telling you talking about oh, talking about pro uh, all the athletes at the uh, at the hotel and whatnot? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man. I mean, it's good to meet a bunch of people, like a bunch of people, and then and then when you make like the world team, bro, it's that is even crazier. Like like before you meet cool people, but like. Now you're like living with them for like a week, so it's like, <laughs> so it's like I don't know. It's just cool. You get to like really create a bond with them and like build friendship to people like who you normally wouldn't be around normally, and then you know just have like connection with people like across the world. Like I don't know. It's it's just like everything you want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I just I like building relationships like that. Like that's. I don't know. I enjoy that. So that's something I like a lot about the sport of track and field. Yeah. So yeah, you got a girlfriend now that you I, met I when you were abroad? Ah, bro, I wish, man. <laughs> I'm out here quarantine. I'm quarantining by myself, bro. Same. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, though. Um, oh, actually, I, I remember where we uh, left off, too. You were saying that you trained with Christian Coleman. And I was like, you say it's, he's the fastest. He gets to train with the fast, or you get to train with the fastest guy in the world. And I was like, well, he gets to he gets to train with the fastest hurdler in the world. So it works out pretty good. <laughs> Before you left. Hey, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that that's super yeah, cool. Man, for, it's definitely good. Uh, for those for those who don't know, Christian Coleman, I think didn't he just set? Did he, he didn't set the world record. He set the American record for the hundred meter hurdles, didn't he? Or something crazy like that. Or he won. He won. You. He won um, worlds. He, I, I know he has the world record for the uh, the indoor sixty. Mm-hmm. He has the world record for that. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he has any records after actually. I mean, he's he won the uh, world championships this past year. Mm-hmm. He got. I think he got third in the last Olympics. Did he? Or I don't know. Wait, did he win? I don't know. I'm being confused. There are too many, too many championships. They they are running <laughs> yeah. to be honest. He's won a couple gold medals. He he making that money. That's all I say. He, he's a Nike <laughs> athlete also. Just a couple gold medals. Best man in the world right now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. He got he got a few gold medals in there. What happened? What happened around the? Uh, there was I know there was like some controversy with him about like he didn't want to take uh like a, a drug test or something like that. What happened with that? I because I I don't know. It was. It was it just was it just was, media freaking out? Like was it just kind of like bogus from that point? It, or was def- it? it definitely was. But I mean, I don't know if you know this, but like now that we're pro athletes, we get like we have to get like drug tested. Like normally, we have to like like more than Kentucky. About, you said what? Like more than what we did at like what, what we got drug tested at Kentucky or different oh, kind of drug oh, testing. Oh yes, a lot more. Bro. Wow. A lot more. Okay. Wow. Like me. Me earlier in this year, bro, I got tested five times within five days. No, no, it was like it was like a week, bro. It was, it was like a week. It was the craziest thing, bro. Like I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like how did you get the results in the lab? Yeah, bro. It didn't go that way. I know it don't. But <laughs> but like it just depends. Like sometimes you get tested. Like I got drug tested the day before a race. The day of the race and then the day after, like, how am I do something within these hours? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think like, they're just trying. Maybe they're just trying to mess with you mentally, like, so, so you know, like, that they're gonna, they can come whenever, right? Maybe that's the. Whole group, yeah, right? possibly. Yeah, definitely. But it's just like you have to feel out your whereabouts where you are every like day, every, like all the time. You have to fill it out, and it's just, I don't know, it's it's crazy. Damn. But. 
it, it is what it is. It's yeah. part of the life. Yeah. So, and no, with his, um, I don't know. He got tested so many times last year. One, first of all, he's the best man in the world, so you know he gonna get tested a yeah, whole bunch. Of course, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, I don't know if he missed one or something or something happened. I don't know, but it wasn't like he was trying not to get tested. Yeah. It was just either he missed one, he missed one or something or something like that happened. And then they just made it seem like it was so much worse than it was. Like it wasn't, it wasn't anything serious at all. Well, like just, yeah. just like from your perspective, if you get drug tested five times in, in a week, dude, that's like insane. Like as a pro athlete, like you have so many other things you have training to worry about. You have nutrition, you got to like, didn't then exactly. throw that in the mix. Like it's just, it's such a pain, right? I don't think the average everyday person who reads the media wouldn't get that. And they would actually like, like, oh my God, exactly. he's cheating, like, or, you know, and not actually, exactly. they don't understand, they don't understand the other perspective, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely wild, but you're right. Yeah. Crazy. So what's next? What's some, what are some of the goals you have? Of course, you got Tokyo 2021 now, 20, Tokyo 2021. Yeah. What's the game plan up until then? <laughs> Um, I mean, obviously the goal is for me really just to be the best, like be the best I can be. But the thing is, I know I can be the best ever. So like, even based on the years I've had past, like the world record is definitely one of my biggest goals. And then just even every year just being the best, like just winning races consistently being at the top of my game. I know if if I'm at the top of my game and there's not a lot of people that, can beat me so that's really my biggest goal it's not to beat any certain person or just like as far as the competition goes but if i'm running at my best every every week every year then i know i'm gonna be i'm gonna be cool so that's my goal man just being the best i think yeah like it's an internal game it's not about anything externally like yeah so i'm just trying to set this up there's here. nothing but yeah, it's definitely internal, bro. I mean, at the end of the day, that's how that's how it has to be with track because like these people are in different lanes. Like it's not like they whatever they do is not gonna affect you. If you don't run your best race, it doesn't matter what they do. And if you do run your best race, it also if they beat you, then they're just better than you, and you know what you got to work on, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you run your best race, not a lot of people will beat you. That's what I tell myself. Yeah. So I just try to run that best race every day practice meets get used to it get consistent with it mm-hmm. yeah man is it more it's it yeah. seems like it's more internal almost like like getting that it's yeah, not definitely. like it's like an internal struggle or battle like to be the best versus yeah. external yeah it definitely is i feel like a lot of people focus on like better than him or being better than him or being better than him for me i feel like if i'm gonna be the best i need to be at my best you know like if i'm not at my best then i can't be the best and when i say be the best i'm not talking about just like people running down i'm talking about like ever like mm-hmm. history like daniel roberts is the best hurdler ever you yeah. know like that <laughs> dude there's no like re- that, that's there's no reason why that can't be you 100 like and I, like when you say that i have no doubt that that will be you like you know what i mean yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's that's the goal, bro. You just got to have that mindset. You can't have, I mean, obviously doubts come sometimes. But overall, that has to be your mindset. You have to know that, like, you can be that. And you are that. It's just you're not there yet. You know, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like You're becoming. It's like, like a process. Past, yeah, like, you already are that same person, but just you, you have to do it things to get there you know like you're not going to change like you're not going to have some huge life transformation to get there like you already are that person it's just a few things that you have to do to get there a few things you may have to sacrifice to get there also yeah so like when you when you say those things to yourself and you like convince yourself of that like subconsciously you start to do things without having to think about it you know Mm -hmm. so that that is a big part of it just the mental game is a lot of a big thing that a lot of people don't i take an account for i guess 
in sports in general, like the mental game is like that. That is the game. Like if you can get that, then you. It don't matter who you're racing. You can. It don't matter what the circumstances is. Yeah. No matter if it's raining, thirty degrees and raining. <laughs> <laughs> like Iowa. I ran. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, man, you could. You could definitely get it. And so, music is it. And one big thing that I definitely try to focus on. And I feel like that's helped me a lot. In my like three years at Kentucky, like my first two years, mentally I wasn't nearly as strong as I was last year, and I feel like that made the biggest, the biggest difference. I mean, obviously I got stronger and faster and stuff, but that was a result of me mentally being stronger. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And what 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 do you think contributed to you getting stronger? Was that like, uh, just like the trials and tribulations you went through, or is there? Or was it doing a lot, of, a lot of things like you were talking about, like convincing yourself uh, that you are that person already? You just have to change a few things. Yeah. Um, or a combination. I would say definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely a combination. Because obviously, when those things happen, like mentally, something like switch on, like that, I, that's never happening again. Or like next year, I'm winning the whole thing. Or like you know, just whatever, whatever it is that comes to your mind right after that, like. Definitely right after a uh, sophomore year when I fell at, at nationals, bro. That was that one hurt probably more than not making it to nationals at all. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like freshman year hurt when I didn't make it to nationals. I was mad, but sophomore year when I made it and then I fell in the prelims, but that one probably hurt a bit more because like I was there, and it's not like I lost the race. I literally just failed. Like I don't know what would happen <laughs> in the race. Like yeah, because I feel like like hurdle four like hurt a four or five like it was early in the race yeah and that one hurt so bad but after after that i definitely had a complete mindset change going into junior year i mean and you can see obviously because junior year went completely different than mm-hmm. any other year i've ever had yeah so yeah that definitely played a big part of it and then also just like telling myself that i'm the best every day you know until i believe it yeah and then once i believed it it can happen i won i had the best time in the world after SEC is like Gen 07, literally the best. So it's just it's just a matter of speaking things into existence, mm-hmm. believing it is going to have to happen. If you're putting the work, obviously, you can't just be talking and not doing that. Yeah, facts. <laughs> facts. So, facts. But yeah. Damn, dude, that is some wisdom right there. For real. Because <laughs> you, you can take that and apply that to anything, like, right? Like, a for sure, for sure, yeah. Dude, it like, doesn't have to be athletics at all. Yeah, at like, all. like you, if you're working hard, like if if you're a photographer, videographer, and you're working super hard, you can like, and you want to be the best video photographer you are. You want to make videos, like you can speak that into existence, right? Yeah. Like it's something that I don't know. At least I exactly. feel like it carries right. over to different areas. Oh no, definitely, bro. If you're doing what, you, if you know you're doing everything you can to be the best, like. And you're doing it consistently, not just like every now and then. Like when like you're in it and you're mentally here. You know, even like the stuff that doesn't have to do with actually taking the pictures. If we're talking about photography, you can do like studying like other people, like the best people, their pictures, their like the angling, the framing, what they've done, the lighting, all that stuff. Like studying is a part of it too. Not just doing what you're doing, but the knowledge of how to do it better, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, definitely. Go ahead and you can do that with anything, bro. Yeah, life in general. That's why I think sports is it's is such a great teacher. Like, like it's such a, like I think maybe that's why a lot of people do it young, right? Because it teaches you so many great things that translate into other areas of life as you grow. Definitely, bro. so many things, especially the one ten hurdles, bro. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really you're especially jumping over hurdles, man. Like, I mean, everything. Exactly, bro. Like you're jumping over like things that are in your way to try and stop you. You need to go for as fast as you yeah. can. Like that, 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 if that ain't life right there, I mean, I don't know what is. <laughs> the definition of life, the once in hurts. <laughs> Very true, man. Ugh, crazy. Cool, man. Well, I mean, I, I, that was awesome. I was super good to catch up with you, dude. Like, and yeah. For real, bro. <laughs> Are you are you done at, are you done in Atlanta right now? So I, yeah, I'm in Georgia with the band right now, bro. So oh, okay, I've been here for probably about 
two and a half weeks, almost three weeks now. So it's been it's been nice. Yeah. It's been chilling. Yeah. So yeah, I'm here. I don't know when I'll go back. To be honest, <laughs> I don't know if I can right now because they might be on like lockdown up there. I have no idea, bro. In Kentucky. Yeah. Damn. Well, I think uh, I don't know if you saw this, but actually, I'll read the tweet to you. The U.S. Department of State yesterday just tweeted out. They were like, uh, "What did the tweet say?" It said, "the The Department of State urges Americans not to, not to delay travel home. So, like people outside the country." Transportation options may soon be unavailable. And then they said, uh, we urge U.S. citizens who, who wish to return to the U.S. to do so now or be prepared to remain abroad for an indefinite period. So they're getting ready to close the border to the U.S., man. That's crazy. That is wild. Yeah. That's so wild. Damn. I mean, hey. I wouldn't mind being stuck in, like, Spain or something, you know? Dude, that's, that's what I'm saying. Dude. <laughs> When when all this when all this stuff happened, I was with my family. We were on a fam- our first family trip in like six years. We were in uh, Greece for the for my dad's running of the torch, and then we our flight got canceled yeah. twice back. So we couldn't. So like we're like, shit. Like what do we do? We end up and Delta Delta ended up canceling all their flights out of out of, uh, uh, out of Europe. And so we're like, oh my god, what do we do? So we ended up finding a flight out of, out of Air France. But I was like, would it really have been the end of the world to be stuck in Greece? Like. <laughs> I know. Like beautiful I weather, loved that, bro. <laughs> yeah. And, I would love that. <laughs> and all, all, I'm just sure you could get a hotel, super cheap. Like the food there is super great. Yeah, like, exactly. There's like, orange trees everywhere. Bro, like, <laughs> I, oh my gosh, just thinking about it, bro. I actually haven't been to Greece yet, bro. Dude, it was. It is. It is surprisingly beautiful. Like it was. I was not expecting it to be as beautiful as it was. It's like. It's like it's like similar to uh, Northern California, I would say. But it's hotter. Okay. It's more warm there. Um, it'd be like it'd be like if you were living in like Palo Alto, like in the Stanford area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah that's crazy, bro. <laughs> that's crazy. But. I'll... What? I said I'd love to be stuck over there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Where you want to go? What's next? In, what's next on your travel list? I was supposed to go to Rome this year. Seriously. That would have been nice. I would have loved that. Yeah. Um, go see the Colosseum. But... I don't think that's gonna happen anymore. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, I don't know. I think I wasn't gonna go overseas that much. Actually, I think that might have been the only one because a lot of the meets that I was gonna go to were like really close to USA's in that time, so I couldn't go to those. But I was gonna go there. I was gonna be at Prefontaine. I was gonna be at Drake photo relays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I had a great schedule lined up, bro. Me and Grant was going to race, like, I think, like, two or three times in a season. So that would have been nice. Damn. That's always good. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I don't I don't know what's, what's happening now, to be honest. <laughs> no idea, bro. Uh, you're, I think everybody's kind of in the same boat, so. Yeah. Well, any any wise words to leave off on before before I let you go and hang with your fam? Are they, do you think they're um, awake yet? <laughs> Either way. You say you think your fam's awake or yet or no? They still sleeping. Shit. Honestly, bro, I've been home, so been on, bro. Like I have not been in any rush to get up, bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> I've been going to sleep late, waking up late. Like I've been going to sleep at like average, I say like two o'clock. Bro, what you doing at two? What you doing until two? <laughs> like we used to be watching movies, bro, watching games, Disney like, movies. Uh, <laughs> yes, like, I'm dead serious. Yeah. But <laughs> But we used to be up chilling, and then we go to sleep, wake up at like twelve o'clock, eat, work out, back to movies. That <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's, that's what we've been doing all week, man. It's been so fun. Man. I, I love hanging out with my family, man. That's but, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I I'd say for my words of wisdom, just cherish the relationships and the time you got with people. Because I mean, not. Like in a negative way, but like you, you never know when it's someone's time, or you never know when anything can happen. So mm-hmm. let people you love know that you love, you know, not just saying it, but like actions. Mm-hmm. So yeah, do that. It's important. Spread love, man. Love, man. Well, I love you, brother. Thank you so much. I, I love you too, man. <laughs> it's been great. It's yeah. been great. Dude, we, we need, I, need, I need to stay in touch with you more often. I, mean, I feel like I just chatted with you last week. Like, because I don't know, whenever we get back and chat together, it's like it's like we, we, we pick up right where we left off, right? But 
It was yeah, so, 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 so good to see your beautiful face again. And uh, I wish you nothing but the best of luck for the next couple of years. Yes, sir. You too, bro. Good luck with everything, man. Love you, dude. Love you too, bro. Catch you later. All right. Peace.